Um, ladies and gentlemen, can I ask for your attention? First of all, let me kindly ask you to come closer. Uh, we'll make it less of a formal conference because we are actually, many people in the room know each other. We've got a representation of vendors, regulators, standard setters. Um, so our proposal to adapt to the agile situation where the students are still sleeping and part of the participants from the industry as well, um, what we would like to do is we would like to change a little bit the format and make it a less formal discussion. Yesterday we had a great example of this discussion. In the afternoon we had a very, very relaxed format style of um, just exchanging views on the future of dictionaries, financial reporting, the way how the standards are defined. So I think that this would be a better way. We've got a few really good speakers, keynote speakers, to give us some food for thought. And let's make it a little bit less formal. Let's make it a bit more um, exchange the views, comment, and so on, just like in the style of yesterday's afternoon, rather than presentation after presentation. What do you think? Okay, and I will, I will definitely make use of the enthusiasm of Leaf to help me here. All right. Firstly, we've got a, this tiny surprise for you as yesterday. Some, some of you who have seen it yesterday, it will be similar for some new. So yesterday I shared with you a couple of thoughts, um, especially on one particular component which is important for me, which is trust. And I, uh, my, my personal belief is that um, we are living in the times of disruption, and this disruption doesn't really concern technology. We typically embrace technology. For hundreds of years we've been embracing technological developments. But what we are facing currently, which is the most challenging thing, is this disruption in trust. 
are we in a position to say that people trust uh, the financial system? I don't think so. I personally doubt. Uh, what do they actually trust? They trust information which sometimes is perceived as um, alternative facts. They trust information generated on the network which is difficult to be verified. Okay? So how do we embrace this trust? How do we embrace this challenge to create the trust in the financial ecosystem? How do we tackle the issue of people generating a lot of information on the network or relying on things which previously would be uh, considered untrusted? Cryptocurrencies is one example. There is no supervision, there are no organizations uh, which impose any supervisor rules on top of that, yet a number of people, not only the cipher punks, uh, they do trust cryptocurrencies. And how do we embrace that change? How do we go forward and what are the components of building this trust in the ecosystems? If you look back um, to some of these uh, interesting books, one of them that I had had the pleasure to read was Liakwat, if I remember correctly his name and surname, Ahmed, uh, Pulitzer winner, and he wrote the book Lords of Finance. Um, has anybody of you had a chance to read it? I do recommend it. It's a story from approximately 1880 until 1930 or 1940 uh, from the perspective of four central uh, bankers establishing actually the modern central banking systems. It is the governor of the New York Fed, the governor of the Bank of England, the governor of the Reich Bank back then, and the governor of the Bank de France. And it tells the story how these guys economically were contributing, interacting, shaping up the financial relations and the entire ecosystem, building this entire ecosystem back then. The very peculiar thing that Ahmad captured in this book are all the economic and social conditions which actually contributed, um, or he argues that this contributed to uh, the war um, being waged. Um, these factors embrace things such as unemployment, embrace things such as uh, interest rates, these factors embrace things such as basically the situation, relations between the banks and the borrowing of money between the central banks. Uh, there are really interesting facts. I don't know if you know, but there were situations where um, uh, the allies were borrowing money to the Reichsbank, which was used to fund the weapon to be used in the war against the allies. So these were the real situations. And this, all these things were captured as a combination of economic and social factors. Now, back there, there was a lot of debate, and this is what Ahmed also pictures, there's a lot of debate about this trust. Who can you trust, how do you establish this trust, and so forth. The question is, are we in a really, really different times nowadays? The trust in the financial uh, services and the organizations such as central banks disrupted, at least since the last crisis, but I would even argue that before, with the different bubbles on the markets and so on, it's really difficult to say whether people do trust the processes, the data, the supervisory methodologies or not. If you ask a common person on the street uh, whether they understand even the relationships and the, the trust that is being built by their very financial ecosystem that they operate in with currencies, with payments, with buying certain, um, uh, certain securities for their retirement funds and so on, it would be really difficult for them to, to respond yes on a common, so to say, level. Now we are also facing issues such as fin financial inclusion. Lots of people who are way, way even um, uh, further out of the financial ecosystem than we can imagine. Not having access to the very basic tools which many operate. So that, that's all components of building this trust. And yesterday I argued that it is really not important whether we build the ecosystems agile, whether they are efficient, whether they are stable, standardized or not standardized. The, the very, very first and most important thing is whether they are trusted. For me personally, it means that when my daughter grows up, whether she can actually trust the system that will be operated. Will she understand the cryptographic functions that are laying uh, below all the, uh, so to say, foundations of this, of this, let's say, national cryptocurrencies? I doubt it. Well, maybe she will actually. Maybe she will be a cryptographer and she'll be a hacker and she'll know much more about it. Uh, but 
in, on average, would a person understand all of this math going in? Look at the examples which uh, have been flying around in, uh, in this ecosystem, in these advanced mathematical circles recently. I don't know if you've heard of zero knowledge proofs. Uh, something which effectively is a very simple thing. How can you establish a system in which someone without rele uh, releasing a lot of information can confirm a status of something, right? These are very, very common logical issues. But the solutions that are being proposed nowadays involve elliptical curves, involve some very, very advanced math. Can you trust, actually, that these algorithms, based on this trust, deliver what you expect them to? And how would you trust it? Before, we had trust in institutions, central banks, financial institutions, uh, regulators, supervisors, governments. I oh, doubt about governments that we ever trusted, but anyway. Uh, but we had some trust in that. These components were establishing the trust. We also built trust into law, processes, regulations, and so forth. Now, trust seems to be getting into things such as algorithms. Can you actually trust an algorithm? Will you trust the AI that will emerge? Is the AI intention going to be exactly the same as, let's say, a group of bodies who created uh, this AI? or a group of experts who created this AI. So with that, I would like to leave that as a food for thought and a, as a food for discussion. I would like to invite the first speaker. I asked Beju to, uh, all of you pretty much know Beju, but if not, um, he's the uh, head of regulatory data collection and analysis, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. Um, I will leave it to you because the titles are always confusing. But most importantly, Beju is actually a, a, a thinker in terms of combining various aspects, such as standards, such as technologies, such as data, and the regulatory processes. And at the Bank of England, they do operate on a vast majority of all these components. So, Bedro, without any further ado, if you could share with us your thoughts on this future trends, where the bank comes from, what's, what's your views? Thanks, Michael. Good morning, everyone. Sorry. That is on. So, um, so my, yeah, as Michael said, he set me a bit of a challenge around talking about what the vision for a future of financial ecosystems might be. So today I'm not going to be talking about XBRL or what the bank is up to or blockchain or fintech. Well, I'm talking a, bit, a little bit about fintech. Um, this is going to be something a bit more different, concentrating some of the areas that I have an interest in and have a bit of a passion for, um, and yeah, I'll just uh, get into it. But before we, um, before I begin, um, session's presented under Chatham House rules, so no comments or opinions can be attributed to me, and um, also the, so many opinions or views are uh, expressed here are my own, not